Yeah, well, what a lovely, lovely, lovely afternoon to celebrate Rosita's life and to remember her. Welcome to the Elstree Liberal Synagogue. It's enormous pleasure and honor for me to welcome you all here to remember Rosita. I'm a younger generation of the rabbis, and I have to say that I unfortunately didn't have a pleasure to get to know Rosita really well. I remember her as the youngly qualified rabbi at one of my LJ sessions and questioning my new approach to liberal Judaism. And she, by that time, became just a legend. So until actually she died, I didn't even know her surname because she was known by all of us as Rosita. So I would like to say warm and big welcome to all of you here, particularly Rosita's family, her daughter, Sally. It's lovely to have you with us. And uh, Martin, colleague and friend as well from LJS, lovely to have you with us. I particularly would like to welcome Andrew Goldstein, the president of Liberal Judaism, who's going to speak a little bit later in the service, and Ruth Seeger, who is the chair of Liberal Judaism. It's lovely to have you with us too. I would also would like to welcome all of you, friends and family, to this wonderful and special, special occasion. We will have tea at the end of the service where each of you will have an opportunity to share your memories about Rosita, as we all lovingly knew her. And also there is a memory book which, where you can leave your um, memories or recollections, few stories about Rosita at the end as well. And now it's a pleasure for me to invite here Carol Hurst, the Vice President of TLSE, for a few words of welcome. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this very special service in memory of our dear Rosita. Um, regretfully, Michael Walton chairman of TLC Synagogue Trustees can't be with us today and has asked me to read out his tribute to Rosita as follows. I would love to have known Rosita when she held her position as executive director of ULPS as it was known then, but I feel lucky to have become friends with her as a fellow member of TLSE and from being on the Rights and Practices Committee together. In my early post-United Synagogue years at TLSE, I only went to services on High Holy Days, and before I got to know her, I have to admit to being a little intimidated when I first saw Rosita sitting in the front row at Claw Shalom. I remember thinking she looked a little stern. In reality, nothing could have been further from the truth. I always enjoyed being in her company, a gentle sense of humour, and valued her con her contributions at meetings. I smile when I recall her light-hearted annoyance with Rabbi Pete and me about the frequent Monty Python references. After her stroke, I said to Rosita on more than one occasion that I hoped to have her vocabulary and be as articulate when I got to her age. I'm sure she thought I was patronizing her, but she was genuinely still impressive, even in her reduced capacity. And as I said earlier, I only wish I had known her when she was at the height of her powers. Michael Walton. And we'll start our memorial service on page one with Psalm 121, which was Rosita's favorite. As I Show me my 
Earth has not anything to show more fair. Dull would he be a soul who could pass by, a sight so touching in its majesty. This city now doth like a garment wear the beauty of the morning, silent, bare, ships, towers, domes, theatres and temples lie open unto the fields and to the sky all bright and glittering in the smokeless air. Never did sun more beautifully steep in his first splendor, valley, rock or hill. Ne'er saw I, never felt a calm so deep. The river glideth at his own sweet will. Dear God, the very houses seem asleep and all that mighty heart is lying still. There is a moment of disbelief when someone who has been part of the fabric of your life for decades dies. How long it lasts depends on many factors. Then what really matters is what you do with the memories of a lifetime of friendship and admiration. Many of my memories of Zeta will be shared by some at the service and online. Events we actively shared with her, others when we saw her in action. I recall some more intimate moments. When Zeta and Stanley came over to Jilly's and my home in Pima, to celebrate the 80th birthday of a wonderful man, a member of Wembley at the time, called Ted Goodfriend. The evening was full of happiness and laughter, the repartee sharp and the affection tangible. Of our party of six, only I survived. I also recall the phone ringing and receiving the news that Stanley had died suddenly. I got in the car and drove over to their flat. And I remember so vividly the love that Monique, Val and others brought to Zeta at that time of grief and pain. And in the months afterwards, Zeta was dignified and accepting <laughs> and she rebuilt her life with fortitude and determination. And of course, Rosita Rosenberg was a proud liberal Jew, committed not just to the cause of the liberal movement, but to the ideology of liberal Judaism. It is true to say that she did much to strengthen our movement, not just being integral to the founding of new communities, but building personal relationships with hundreds and hundreds of people from liberal communities in the UK and Ireland. When all is said and done, however, we should not allow professional achievements alone to sum up the value of a human life. It is the soul of a person that matters most. Here, as in everything else, Zeta stands out. She was a devoted, loving and caring friend created from cloth of gold shot through with decency, honour and compassion. Her memory is an abiding blessing for us all. Thank you very much, Charles. We continue now our service with Psalm 23. Eternal God, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. 
You guide me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Even when I walk through in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and steadfast love shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in your house, eternal God, forever. I'm sure all of you here, or almost all of you, could get up and give a tribute to Rosita. Um, many of you have known her even longer than me, um, and in so many different ways. Uh, Rabbi Pete Tobias gave uh, an excellent talk on her in the ongoing LJ Education Hub series, celebrating the 120th anniversary of liberal Judaism, 120 years. Rosita must have covered, covered over half of them. And some of the slides that will be up later. Uh, I contributed some of them. I, I once did a, a slideshow at a ULPS conference. This is your life, Rosita Rosenberg. And, and it reminded me of some of those earlier times. Um, this young, beautiful girl, Rosita, back home in South London. Um, an orthodox household, although I believe she was never really orthodox. I can't imagine her, so always a bit of a rebel. Um, one over to South London Liberal Youth Club a drama queen, if you look at some of those slides, there she was appearing in plays. And I noticed there, if you spotted how much she had to pay to join the South London Liberal Synagogue, it was quite cheap to be a Liberal Jew in those days. <laughs> but nothing cheap about Rosita. I first met Rosita when I got involved in the old Liberal youth movement, Flipjig. Anyone remember Flipjig? Yes. Over 50 years ago, I was there. I, I came down from Birmingham. I came across her in the office, the one office that ULPS had in those days, in the old LJS building. She and the late 
Greta Hyman were the only paid administration. I recall them at desks, each one facing the wall but on opposite sides of the room. <laughs> and they seemed to shout at each other. <laughs> Arguments and plans made, but each talking to the wall. And despite the shouting, they were very good friends and constructively working together for the movement. When URPS moved to the old Montague Centre, the olds remind me that I'm no longer as youthful as I was, and looking at some of the faces, you can join me in that. <laughs> Greet in the new old Montague Centre. Greta and Rosita had separate offices, they're all modern, but, but they kept their doors open and shouted even loud <laughs> instructions at each other. Rita was the organising secretary and Rosita was, amongst other things, the secretary to the director, Rabbi Sidney Brichter. In time, Rosita took over as the organising secretary and, and she and Sidney made a superb team that oversaw the greatest period of growth of URPS was, I think, to enjoy. Sidney came up with the ideas and was the public face. But Rosita did all the work. She was also secretary to the rabbinic conference and so often would remind the rabbis of what they had to do and so often with great skill remind them what they couldn't do. She had a harder job telling Sidney Brifto what he couldn't do. <laughs> Rosita knew everybody in the movement and the peculiarities of every congregation she knew the Bruegerses before they happened. <laughs> and she tried sometimes to mend them. And as we all know, Bruegers in congregations, not that easy to do. She organized conferences and seminars and was the person everybody went to when they had a query or a problem. Of course, in those early days, it was typewriters. And then there were modern inventions like golf ball typewriters and gestetner machines and typing on wax stencil all before the invention of office computers and word processing and emails yet i'm not sure it was any less efficient it certainly wasn't when rosita was in charge and she easily mastered the new technology as it came along she never went to university but she was incredibly well read and widely knowledgeable I recall at rabbinic retreats, she and Rabbi John Rayner competing to see who could finish the Times cross crossword first. <coughs> she co-authored with Rabbi Lawrence Regal the definitive history of our movement, but failed to make it as I read through the book again to make it clear that a certain Rosita Rosenberg was for decades the heart of liberal Judaism the force that made it tick, and the energy that made it thrive. And no doubt she will, from heaven, spot some grammatical errors in my heartfelt <laughs> tribute. With the retirement of Rabbi Brichto, she became executive director and ably filled his shoes. Of course, at a disadvantage, as she was not a rabbi and was a woman, but she coped admirably with both problems and led the way in women becoming seen as equals in all aspects of leadership in our movement. In our movement. I don't think there's anybody from South London, Liberal Synagogue, who knows her from way back then, but certainly it must be Wembley as I look at all the faces here and the contributions she made there. It was her, in her movement capacity that she founded Stanmore Liberal Synagogue, which became Hartsphere and then this very Liberal Synagogue elsewhere. And she and her husband Stanley were active and energetic members. I remember it. And I tried to find, but I couldn't find it, some of those early pictures. You probably got them in your archives of those early days with the paintbrush and restoring this building, how wonderful it looks now with the, the new makeover. Um, and though she was devastated as 
as Charles said earlier, devastated by Stanley's early death, she coped with courage and endeavour and with her friend's support. And that, of course, of her daughter Sally, she faced her final years with courage that she showed throughout since Stanley's death. Though incapacitated, she did her very best to get the most out of life that was possible. Rosita was a, a towering figure in liberal Judaism, and she was known and loved throughout Anglo Jewry. But she was also a reliable schnepper for this congregation, and she was a loyal friend to so many, and of course a loving mother to Sally. Personally, I feel privileged to have known her. For she put, supported my many endeavours throughout my rabbinate, as she did to so many rabbis, to so many lay people, as she did for her many friends. She was indeed an ancient Chayel, a woman of valour. We continue with El Mal Rahamin. El Mal Rahamin. And exalted God, grant perfect rest under the wings of your presence to the soul of Rosita, who has gone to her eternal home. Merciful God, shelter her forever under your loving care. Let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. May her destiny be with you, and may she rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. And I would like to invite David Liebman, left president of Nottingham Liberal Synagogue to pay his tribute to Rosita. Thank you, Rabbi. How well did I know Rosita? How qualified am I to talk about her? As Andrew has said, this towering figure within liberal Judaism. She and I first became friends when in the early 70s, as members with our spouses, Stanley and Ray, we became members of the young married group of the Wembley and District Liberal Synagogue, uh, whose rabbi was the wonderful Bernard Hooker. We became close in a diff different capacity in the late 80s, when she was organising secretary of ULPS, and I was chairman for three years, and I used to travel down from Nottingham two or three times a month. And of course, it was she predominantly that I used to spend time with. So I knew her well. What was it about Rosita? Rosita, as she was known to the chosen many. She was universal, ubiquitous, omnipresent. Let me explain. Everyone in ULPS seemed to know her, everyone. It was a badge of honour to know her and to be known by her. And don't forget, 
no computer, no email, just phones, voice only, no FaceTime, and letters. And of course, in those pre-Zoom days, we used to meet people. Yes, ponim el ponim, face to face. Not only that, and this for me is the kernel of her uniqueness. She talked to everyone, high and low, in the same voice, the same tone, the same manner, chatty, unpretentious, conversational. Be it Joe Bloggs or the President of the State of Israel, it was always the same Rosita Rosenberg. And as a consequence, everyone, bishop or baker, was very happy to talk to Rosita. What a diamond she was for ULPS. How immeasurable is our sense of loss. Thank you. Birth is a beginning, and death its destination. And life is a journey from childhood to maturity, of youth to age, from innocence to awareness, and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength, or from strength to weakness, and often back again. From health to sickness, we pray to health again. From offence to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, from grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until, not looking backwards or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high point along the way, but in having made the journey step by step. A sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death its destination and life is a journey. Sita never forgave me. I was four years old and very cute, red curly hair and an orange princess dress. The problem wasn't my cuteness or the dress, it was that I had measles and it was Zita and Stanley's wedding. <laughs> I looked so sad and pathetic that everyone bypassed Zita in all her glory and fussed over me. Zita reminded me of this every time we met. <laughs> really, she did it. <laughs> Joking aside, she was a wonderful aunt, although she refused to use the title aunt. She said it made her feel old. Zita and my mum would go on great adventures in the States with mum navigating and Zita driving, just like Thelma and Louise. <laughs> So today, I would like us to remember Zita's young outlook on life and also her sense of adventure. Thank you. Unfortunately, Rabbi Merida Salman, a life president of TLSE, is not well. He's really sick even to take part uh, on Zoom in the service. So I will be reading his part of the service instead of him on his behalf. Thank you for the long life of Rosita Rosenberg, for her love and promulgation of liberal Judaism, her general knowledge and enthusiasm and her wonderful friendship. May the mention of her name bring us happy memories. Please stand for the Kaddish. It gadal, wait gadash, meraba. 
May Rosita's memory be her blessing. Zichrona Livracha. And we will conclude our service with the song Hina Matov Umanayam. How wonderful for all of us, brothers and sisters, to be here together. In the Matov Umanayim, Shevetachim Gamiyatat. In the Matov Umanayim, Shevetachim Gamiyatat. to the memory of Rosita Rosenberg, Rosita or Zita, and at the very end of the booklet you can see lovely tributes paid to her by her friends and family and obviously more is going to be said and remembered at, at the tea time. I would like to thank very much everyone who joined our service today, particularly people on Zoom. Thank you very much Robert Charles Middleborough and David Lipman for joining us on Zoom and we wish Robert Alan Mann Refor Schlima, a speedy recovery. Thank you very much, and I hope you'll have a good afternoon. Please join us for the afternoon tea.